Welcome class. I thought I'd talk a little bit more about your first textbook reflection assignment. It's part of week five. So let me get into Canvas and I'm going to go over here to modules. And this is after you're done with your midterm exam, which uh, I will have your grades soon if you don't have them already. Now I'm re recording this a little bit uh, in advance, a couple of weeks in advance. And I just thought this would be a good time to um, you know, check in and really help you with your first textbook reflection assignment. The first thing you might want to do is go over the Unit 2 Overview and Learning Objectives. In this second unit, which will focus on chapters 6, 7, 8, 9, and 17, you can see what we're going to be doing. Essentially, we're continuing our discussion of basic weather uh, and climate elements. We're going to be focusing on adiabatic cooling, buoyancy and stability, which is extremely important for understanding uh, thunderstorms and tornadoes, and even hurricanes. Understand lifting mechanisms that lead to severe weather. We have to assess stability sometimes in order to, to be able to forecast thunderstorms and other severe weather. Then we're going to look into pressure and the main forces behind wind. Large-scale factors that produce the Santa Ana winds, which is you know, one of the types of severe and hazardous weather we're going to talk about. And then in order to understand a broader range of severe weather, we're going to look at air masses, weather fronts, and the different kinds of weather patterns we see with these fronts. OK. Your first textbook reflection assignment will be focused on the following. Explain the three forces that govern wind. Pressure gradient force, the Coriolis force, and friction. But then, name and explain the force that is mostly absent in the upper troposphere, and explain how this absence actually affects the wind speed aloft. Now, I'm talking about the wind speed only, not wind direction, not you know, the pattern of what it might look like on a map. I'm really just focusing on the speed. Now, with this assignment, you must use two, no more, no less, one sentence quotes. Please put the page numbers for your quotes. And this is supposed to support your answer to this assignment. If you have used a previous edition, you know, like the, I have the third edition, but you could use the fourth edition, um, please state that in your response. Now, please remember that you, um, can't use more than one or, or sorry, you cannot use more than um, two one sentence quotes. So basically, I want you to find, like I have here, two one sentence quotes and frame your answer around that. Your final answer should be at least three paragraphs, at least five sentences in each paragraph, and it should be free of spelling and grammar errors. And of course, no lay work is accepted. And so, the bottom line here is, is I'm, I'm asking you guys to answer this question mainly in your own words, but then use those two one-sentence quotes to support your answer. The reason why I do this is that I want you guys to, first of all, read the textbook, read the chapters, and find two sentences or, or you know, whatever you want to consider a quote, two one-sentence quotes that help support your answer. If you add more quotes to that, then your answer is more what comes directly from the textbook and not from you. You know, really good learning will come from answering most of this question in your own words. So that's why I have that limit. So there's a couple of ways to get started. Down here in the reply section, you can simply type your answer here and, and post your answer that way. Another way to do it is actually open up a Word document or some other word processing program, type your answer there, and then copy and paste it here. I like the latter option because that way you have time to really refine it, and you can save it too if you, in case you want to work on it a little bit now and then uh, the rest of it later. You will also want to review the rubric, and the rubric is attached here, but it's also in um, a separate file underneath this assignment. Just one note, you do not have to reply to other people, but you're more than welcome to if you like. 
So let's go next and talk about the rubric. Most of the time, you want the excellent category, obvious, for obvious reasons. So in order to get an excellent score, you have to successfully and with, de with detail answer this question by describing each force and then talk about the missing force aloft and how it affects the wind speed aloft. Again, you must use two, no more, no less, one sentence quotes with page numbers to support your answer. You must have three paragraphs, and each paragraph has to have at least five sentences without spelling and grammar errors. You can write more than this if you want, but this is the minimum. Now, if you end up getting some score less than excellent, I have descriptions and, and how many points to take off for the good, fair, and poor categories. So I hope this helps you get started. Uh, we're going to have three of these total uh, by the time we're done with this course. As always, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.